Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Today we are gonna be talking about what high energy draw RV appliances can you run from lithium batteries. So today we are gonna go through our water kettle, my hair dryer, the induction cooktop, our electric space heater, the microwave, my beloved air fryer, and of course the air conditioner, which is what everybody wants to know. Can I power my air conditioner off my batteries. We did a video similar to this three years ago while we lived in the van. However, on that one, we showed all of our devices. So if you're looking for a full extent of everything that you might need to power off your batteries, check that video out as well. We've been brand partners with Battleborn Batteries now for three years, and we've had a few different systems, including the Sprinter van Chris was just talking about. We did a overland stint in our truck and a rooftop tent. And now we have this larger system, which consists of 1200 watts of solar up on the roof, three Battleborn game changers underneath the bed, as well as a Victron MultiPlus 3000. Now you don't need a system this large to run large RV appliances like that, but you do need something beefed up more than just what comes standard in an RV. So for what we're gonna be talking about today, you would probably need a minimum of a 2000 watt inverter, as well as 200 amp hours of lithium batteries hooked up in parallel. So for example, two Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries hooked up in parallel, will give you 200 amps of continuous discharge or power, as well as a 400 amp surge for 30 seconds. Okay, I know this battery talk can get a little overwhelming at first. So let's just simplify and reiterate our example here. We have 200 amp hours of lithium battery capacity or storage. If the device we are powering from these batteries is drawing 200 amps, we would only be able to run that for one hour. Now on a smaller example, if our device was a one amp draw, we could power that for 200 hours. See the special thing about lithium batteries over lead acid batteries is you can discharge them all the way down to zero if you want safely. With lead acid, it's only about 50% before damage can occur. And to charge these back up, lithium can bulk charge much longer than lead acid so you can get back up to 99% charge, not 80% charge before the absorption stage. But let's get back to this video. Now you could also go with one Battleborn Game Changer, which is 270 amp hours, and that does a 300 amp continuous discharge, which will definitely allow you to power everything we're talking about today. Now, of course, you need some way to charge these batteries up and you don't have to have solar, but I always recommend when people ask me to get as much solar as you can afford because it just makes your life easy simple and it's quiet. You could just use a generator to charge up your batteries, but something we've been testing out lately, I've mentioned in a few of our videos, is the rich 200 watt solar panel, and even something like that can charge up your batteries. So that's a really nice addition, and you don't quite have to go full throttle, full send, putting all those panels up on your roof if you're scared of putting holes in there like we were. So to show the power draw today, I'm gonna to be basically using my Victron Smart Shunt or my Victron Battery Monitor app. And that's a pretty inexpensive piece of equipment that you could put on without even doing a big electrical system. It's just a nice, easy way to know how much battery power you have. So the first thing we need to do here is disconnect our 200 watt rich solar panel. And I'm also gonna turn off my charging from my rooftop solar. So basically we are getting no draw right now from the sun. So that brings us down to zero watts coming in. And if we go back to our battery is drying 12.2 amps coming off of it or 163 watts, which we're going to be using amps and amp hours today. Wattage is the more correct terminology, but I feel like amp hours is more relatable to most people. Well, thankfully I have Aaron to manage all of our power because all that goes right over my head. And all I wanna know is what can I run? <laughs> Lights out. Lights out. Keep that seal closed. Okay, now we're down to seven amps and that's because we have lights on as well, but we're not gonna turn the lights out because that would be kind of weird to do a video in the dark. So we're gonna use seven amps 
93 watts as our base. I wish that said 100 watts. That'd be a lot easier to do. <laughs> yeah. Math. Math, yeah. Math hurts. So let's start with the air conditioner first. We're gonna go over to our antiquated system here, put it on cool. So that's the fan that just started. And there is the air compressor kicking on right there. And we have a soft start or an easy start. So it's gonna be very slow to ramp up. And you can see it starts out at around 1100 watts or around 1000 watts. And if we use our example of 200 amp hours, you can see 80 amps per hour is not gonna run very long if you only have 200 amp hours of batteries. So that's why it helps to have a larger lithium battery bank or having more uh, solar power coming in, bringing that wattage in. Also, this is gonna slowly ramp up and it's gonna continue to draw more and more as it continues to work. Right now, this is pulling about 90 amps and sometimes when it's really hot, we do see it go up even over 100. It's quite cool right now, so it's not working very hard. So this means if you do have that 200 amp battery bank, you're not gonna be able to run it very long, maybe a couple hours continuously. With our big bank of 810 amps, we are able to leave it on overnight so it cycles on and off throughout the night, keeping us cool. So we have a 15 uh, K BTU air conditioner. Some of the smaller ones draw less, but the bottom line with this is you can run your air conditioner off lithium batteries, but how much, how long, that all depends on how big your system is. It is cold in here. Maybe we should set that off with the heater and go right into that. This is really great to use to save propane and it also gives a little bit more even heat. Yeah, I wanna point out these Vornados we've used for years and they work really well. If you're staying in an RV park with free electricity, don't burn your propane, use these. And use what you're paying for, which is that power. Yes, we got one with high, medium, and low settings. So it actually does 750 watt, 1250 watt, and 1500 watt. So we can even variable use that. And it works really great in the small settings like our van and this small travel trailer. So let's put this onto high. You can see that jump up immediately to 125, which would put us around 120 amps that draws. A little tiny box like that um, pulls a lot of power. Wow, so yeah. even more than what the AC was just pulling. Yep, the no. AC will ramp up to that, but it was very slow doing it just because I think it's, it's so cool out right now. It's like, it's 55 degrees. Yeah, and this is the same deal where it will set at that temp and cycle on and off, but we're gonna shut it off and we're gonna go to the next device, which is the microwave. I do have a chicken thigh in here and let's just put it on full power for a minute. We have, what do we got there? That is almost the exact same draw as the, as the heater. Actually, it's identical. So you can see that's about a 1500 watt microwave. But the cool thing about the microwave is you're only using it for 30 seconds to what, two, three minutes? Yeah, I think popcorn is the thing that takes the longest that we make, but I don't know what other people are cooking in their microwave. So that's something to think about. Although they take the same amount of power, this space heater, you need to run. I want this running <laughs> all the time. Yes. And I want to sit right in front of it and I want it 24 seven. This just a couple minutes a day. I would say the electric space heater has been the hardest for us to run on our battery power just because you need to run it for so long. And, it's, and if it's cold out, as soon as you shut it off, it's, it's cold in there. It's cold, yes. Okay, so moving right along, what I do like to use most of my cooking is the air fryer. Now this air fryer is an 1800 watt, I believe. Let me get it plugged in. I forgot to mention we are boondocking at the beautiful Empire Ranch this week. Shh, don't tell anybody where we are. It's uh, amazing here. Yeah, we just did a video on this as well. This is one of our favorites. Okay, so kicking in here, I'm going to crank it up to 400 degrees because that is usually what I cook at. Are you ready? Yep. And go. Ooh, that jumped up. You can see that's 1800 watts of power, 140 amps. So that, oh. that has been the highest draw so far. And again, 
that depends on how long you're gonna use that for, but. Okay, so normally I use this for vegetables. Normally it's seven minutes a time, and it's usually three times a day. But there are some vegetables like butternut squash or spaghetti squash, or even like Brussels sprouts or carrots where I put in here for like 25 minutes. So choose your vegetables wisely. I would say this has probably been our most exciting uh, off-grid usage high appliance besides the air conditioner because oh, it's so nice to be able to do this. So off. when you talk about wanting more power, adding as much solar as you can, getting as big of a bank as you can, this is what you're doing it for. So you can just cook and eat and like live like normal out here. Moving next, still cooking onto the induction cooktop, which I love to use. Again, it keeps the temperature much more comfortable inside your rig when you're cooking, and why burn propane if you don't need and to? And it's faster, right? You mentioned It's faster, that. it boils water much quicker, it gets a much better heat on your pan, so if you're searing or sauteing, it's a much better tool to cook with. Usually, I always will put this on high to get it nice and hot, so let's put it on to max sear and pretend that we're gonna boil some water. You can see that's kind of a slow ramp up as well. It's uh, coming up on just about 1100 watts. So it'll probably creep up to that 1300 watts because we got kind of a small one. Some of these are 1800 watts. Mm -hmm. I've seen ours is the smaller one because we had uh, the Sprinter van at the time. And this bad boy has lasted us for four years now. Yeah, it has some broken worn buttons because I use it so much, but that's it. Now, when I use this, I do usually drop it down to a simmer. Let's check and see what that uses too. So the simmer cuts it down quite a bit to 50 amps, uh, down to under 700 watts of power. So it basically cuts it in half. And again, you're not using this, you know, for hours like an air conditioner. You can so. though. If you're cooking brown rice, that's a 45 minute cook time. I braised some short ribs oh, the yes. other day and that was on for four and a half hours, <laughs> guys. So yes, you absolutely can put some things on here that take several hours. Next, we use every single day our, I don't even know what the brand is, something doctor. We've used this for coffee since our van days. And it's a great way to get your water to the exact temperature that you want it. And I know this one takes about a thousand watts of power because I specifically bought it for the Sprinter van, which had a 1000 watt inverter. So I got that just so we could make water with our Sprinter van. And this is a really quick heat. It usually comes to temperature in what, like four, five minutes, maybe? Yeah, so it's taken 75, uh, roughly roughly 75 amps. Um, you know, if you were to use it for an entire hour, it would deplete, you know, almost an entire battery. So it is a, a big high draw, but you're only using it for a few minutes. All right, we're gonna abort that. And we're on our last device, right? Yeah, and I have to say this, thing flickers our lights and it's like a space this gun. This is like an alien vortex coming through our travel trailer every time I do my hair. So this is a T3 brand. I have no idea what the wattage is. We're gonna find out what it pulls. Are you ready? We are ready. And do you want me to put this on full? Cause usually it flickers so bad I don't put it on full. Let's just do it. On full? Okay. Yeah. Eighteen hundred watts of power, a hundred and forty amps. Woo! Woo -wee. So that's what's pretty amazing. People may not realize how much power the hair dryer actually takes. It takes more than the air conditioner. And this is about a ten minute blow dry for me. And I don't even do a crazy blowout. I just have a lot of hair and I want to get it dry. So that is the list of high power appliances. I would say we use every single day of our boondocking lives here. And I'm curious, what do you guys use? Is there something on the list that we missed? Or do you have questions on any of the products that we've shown? Basically, this is our off-grid system that we've built big enough to be able to handle these high power draws. It's been pretty amazing. We love to boondock. And I would say running the air conditioner all night long where it cycles on and off is an amazing thing to do. If you pull into a Cracker Barrel in the south, 
Mm. And it's 95 degrees outside. There's nothing better than turning on the air conditioner, not worrying about a generator, not worrying about your neighbors. And getting a good night's sleep. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So thanks everybody for watching this video. Let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. And we're going to see you on the next one. Bye.